and uh, we're doing a little series for for August on soul winning and missions. Because we've got missions going again this fall, we're going to uh, Oregon. We're going to do a series in Medford, Oregon, and then we're going to go over to the Philippines and Mindanao, where I've been telling stories, uh, the place called Cagayan, and then we're going to beam it all over the island. It's an island-wide, uh, quarter of a million dollar budget, a huge, huge thing. And uh, I'm writing uh, new messages for that, trying to make that all, because there's some of those areas I've been now two or three times. Uh, so just uh, a great challenge. But uh, I'm going to tell you about going to a place in the north, much harder in the north. This is a town called Baguio. Many of our missionaries loved Baguio because it was in the mountains and it was much cooler. You can drive from Manila up the road and then you go up the mountain and it just, you can just see the, thermo- the temperature go down and it's just nicer. But it rains a lot, just a lot. So a uh, small mission, doesn't have much money, but beautiful people. president was just here, just had lunch with him just uh, well, a couple weeks ago. A uh, great friend of ours. So I preached in the Baguio Central Church. We had a couple of great musicians who are now going with us everywhere we go. And uh, we had a number of young people, but we had to stay in a dorm. And we ended up with a, almost like an epidemic. Once one got sick, they all got sick. And we had speakers sick on all sides. I was in ER with people. Difficult. I wasn't staying in that big room, so I didn't get it. But boy, we were scared. So hard work and uh, preaching, but uh, the music. Oh. A group came from the south called Afterglow, and they came. And then my people came, and then they began to mix these, these groups. And every night would be like a half an hour of just great, powerful life-giving, soul-stirring music that, that I'll never forget. We're trying to always recreate that now. So uh, we're doing week of prayer at the Bayagio uh, Academy during the day. Someone else doing the elementary school. I was doing the academy. Uh, and then at night we would do these. And then during the day we were painting churches and, and working. My brother came to me and he said, Dan, there's a church out here that we really need to build. Gorgeous view across the valley. So that's a uh, Ohab church or whatever it is. Anyway, we built two or three churches in that area. They're all done now, all dedicated, just a great, great, great effort. So we finally got to the, uh, to the end. Interesting projects, challenges every day, rain. <laughs> traffic, unbelievable traffic. I was driving down the mountain to speak week of prayer at a college and then coming back up and then preaching at night. Uh, but beautiful people. And we began to get some decisions, some hard decisions. People that had been holding out for 30 and 40 years. We visited one. And we prayed for that husband who's coming. He's been holding out. And we got to that last Friday night, you know, when we preach on the prodigal son and we say, is there anyone who would like to make a decision for Jesus tonight? Tonight is the night. You know what we say. I grew up scared to death to make appeals, but I've slowly learned uh, to do it. And, uh, and he did. And he walked down the aisle and he stood there. Many young people, some adults, and then here he was. Made a decision. So great. So we had a huge service that Sabbath. They, the gym was next to the church. They opened up that gym. We had people everywhere. We had to work on the technology. Friday night, laid, nothing worked. Finally, one guy did something. All of a sudden, we had our equipment. Um, just oh, prayer, praying to God. So we finished that final service. We had a lunch, and then we headed to the swimming pool. And two of our own team. Filipinos from the Garden Grove Church. We loved them. Studied with them. Hadn't made decisions. Said, Pastor Dan, should we be baptized today? I said, your parents aren't here. How are they going to go? We called them. They said it was okay. I said, let me call them. So I called their parents. Is that okay? We'll take a picture. We'll take a video. But are you okay with your kids being baptized today? And I stood in the water of that pool, baptizing lots of people. And then there came two of my own heroes. 
walked me through the water. One of my families from La Sierra Church, uh, Angel Beloico, he had family there. One of the reasons we went, I think we baptized every one of them, all their children, grandchildren, everybody. We have a picture of like nine, all baptized. Of them. It's good stuff. It's a it's a joy that I that I've not been able to reproduce anywhere else. You can do Disneyland. You can have a sports team win a championship. But that feeling when you dedicate a church and you have poured your sweat into it and you hand this church to people that first night and there's 100 people there and they're saying thank you and you work together with them and you and there's a meal. It's good. Taste of heaven. If you ever thought about being a part of it, uh, give me a call, find me somewhere, and just say, Pastor Dan, I want to be in one. Next year, this year, we're starting again. Uh, we have Philippines again next April, June, probably uh, Tonga. Love to have you be a part of it. This is Spotlight. See you next time. Thank you for watching Spotlight. We're so excited about this. We hope that you'll subscribe and so you'll get all of them. And please just forward it on to others and tell other people about it. And let's just see what kind of an audience we can get for these messages of Spotlight. God bless you.